this is your tech news briefing for Wednesday, July 20th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. A major cybersecurity bug detected in a widely used piece of software has been given a new description, an endemic vulnerability. When it was discovered last year, members of the Biden administration warned that the bug in the software called Log4j was one of the worst vulnerabilities they had ever seen. The flaw allowed hackers to gain remote access to computers so they could extract data or install harmful software. Log4j records user activity and their behavior in applications and has been downloaded millions of times. It was one of the most widely used tools for collecting corporate information. Apache Software Foundation, the company behind the program, issued a patch. But still, this month, a government panel issued a new report, warning that the glitch could still pose significant risks. Joining us to discuss the report and the threat from the Log4j bug is our cybersecurity reporter, Dustin Boltz. Hi, Dustin. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You know, Dustin, we hear the term endemic, and a lot of people think about, you know, diseases. Maybe some of us might think about the change in COVID-19 from a pandemic to an endemic. But we're talking about cybersecurity here. So what does it mean in this case? In this case, um, this government panel concluded that the Log4j cybersecurity issue is endemic because it is so pervasive, uh, so widespread because of the ubiquity of the software affected here, um, that it is going to persist as a a significant risk to companies and everyday users for for a long time. Um, This could be, for a decade or more, uh, a risk that we see that hackers are able to exploit for surreptitious uh, espionage for other malicious purposes. And the reason for that is that in addition to the software being so widespread that's affected here, there are just enduring challenges with getting people to patch their software in order to address the issue. But also the flaw is something that is very easy for hackers to use. And it also allows hackers to potentially burrow rather deeply into affected networks. So it's just sort of a a very, very significant risk uh, when you sort of add all those things together. Apart from finding that this risk was going to be endemic, were there other big takeaways from the report? Yeah, it's sort of a glasses half full, glasses half empty situation because this report concluded that while this is a serious risk that's going to continue for some time, we actually haven't seen it be as bad as a lot of people initially feared. So as I mentioned, you know, there were the fears that this could be like the worst cybersecurity flaw on record. But uh, according to this government review, there are no significant episodes where this flaw was used to uh, disrupt uh, or affect critical infrastructure. And generally, there just hasn't been nearly the level of serious chaos and, and harm caused by it. Now, there are lots of caveats to that. For starters, the government can really only assess what they know about, uh, and that relies heavily on what businesses report to the government. So there could be tons of uh, issues out there that have not been uh, reported. In addition, there's you know the possibility that a lot of networks were compromised uh, and and are affected by this flaw, but just don't know it themselves. Um, Given those caveats, though, it, it is surprising to a lot of people that we haven't seen some sort of you know, massive headline-grabbing attack that was linked back to this uh, Log4j flaw. I want to talk a little bit about the panel that put out this report. They're called the Cyber Safety Review Board. Can you tell us a little bit about them and how they get their authority? Yeah, absolutely. They uh, This is a board housed under the Department of Homeland Security. It's loosely modeled on the National uh, Transportation Safety Board, which people might be familiar with, you know, investigating train derailments and, and plane crashes and that sort of nature. Uh, you know, they'll come in and, and sort of review the episodes and issue reports on sort of what went wrong. The idea for this board is to basically do the same, but with like major national cybersecurity crises analyze them, look at what the problems are, issue recommendations to businesses and to government agencies and so forth, and, and try to you know improve broader cybersecurity as a result. So this was their inaugural report. They've put out this big warning. How do they want companies to address this problem? The board also issues some recommendations about sort of 
you know, um, how companies and the government can work better together. Uh, you know, they really stress the importance of information sharing between the private sector and the government, um, that the faster those things can be done, the faster, you know, the network defenders, uh, the people that the cybersecurity agencies are able to sort of issue recommendations and help people in need. So that's another uh, important thing as well. Additionally, I think, you know, there's just the hope and expectation that, that people will be vigilant about the, about the issue. You mentioned COVID-19 earlier. You know, we're sort of in this endemic phase with the virus where it comes and goes uh, and people sort of maybe adjust their personal behavior somewhat responding to that. And I think uh, the hope from the board here is that with Log4j and with other cybersecurity issues that, you know, people, uh, especially cybersecurity professionals, pay attention to those threats and respond accordingly, you know, with, if there is sort of an outbreak of an, uh, a certain type of attack, it's very important to be following that and uh, respond and pivot as needed uh, when that does occur. All right. That's our reporter, Dustin Voltz. Thanks so much for joining us, Dustin. Thanks so much. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.